43 tackles. He leads everybody in the conference for tackles. Dustin is third in the conference, has an average of 10 per game. So you say, hey, that's uh, that's pretty outstanding for Urbis, but actually, Bill, you got to look at that and say that's way too many tackles this guy should be making. Well, it is, and the thing you like about Tech's defense, Mark, you mentioned Lucini and uh, Brill. Those guys are second on the team, tied for second on the team, 31 tackles apiece. Those are your inside linebackers. Yesh is a cornerback, and you don't necessarily want that guy back there, but their inside linebackers have apparently been playing very well. Rushing the football tweet is out. He averages 55. The next best rusher is Lance Johansson. He averages 31 for the Jimmies, 6.3 per carry. Nice average there, so he'll get most of the uh, carries today out of the backfield. And uh, total offense, Mike uh, Beeler, again, is number one for the Jimmies at 182 per game, the quarterback, and he's getting that done with his arm. And when it comes to uh, passing the football, again, Beeler is uh, thrown for a completion rate of 52%, not too shabby, 54 of 102. And uh, receiving, Matt Wilson has 15 catches. Jay Tweed, 14. Casey Hassauer has nine on the season. And uh, all-purpose, Tweed leads the way for this team at 81 per game. Without him, who's next? Lance Johansson. He averages 64 yards, all-purpose uh, all yards per game. And again, he'll be uh, more of a workhorse today. Defensive stats, Urbis has 43 tackles. Mike Sanders has 37. And Dan Fiala, who's been filling in for the injured linebacker for the uh, Jimmy's uh, Fiala getting starts because Westbrook is out, and he's third on the team in tackles with 33. And sacks, Drew Bear has three so far to lead the Jimmies. Now, when you look at the Hard Rockers rushing the football, they have rushed for 582. Their opponent has rushed for just 296. Passing, though, they've been out uh, thrown by their opponent, 862 yards to 641. And Jamie Dale averages 127 yards per game. Next best is Anthony Renteria. He averages 22. Tony Ostheimer leads the team in uh, receiving at 72 per game. Tyler Barth. Averaging 26, and Jamie Dale averages 21. Eric uh, Yesh is the number one tackler on the team with 33, and then we got a whole bunch here. Timothy Lucchini and Everett Brill and uh, Tom Lundsman all have 31 tackles, and they are tied for second on the team. So those are some of the numbers between these two squads as we get ready for homecoming football, the Jimmies and the Hard Rockers of South Dakota Tech. Dairy Queen pregame show brought to you by Dairy Queen. Something different located at the bottom of Mill Hill. And guess what the blizzard of the month is for the month of October? I don't know. I had the Reese's the other day. October's got to be pumpkin. Though, pumpkin. Right? They're yeah. picking the pumpkin with Halloween coming. So let's start begging now and hope they're listening. <laughs> pumpkin pie blizzard is the blizzard of the month at Dairy Queen. We'll come back and visit with the Jimmy head coach, Bud Edsel. Talk more about homecoming with him after we hear from Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen of Jamestown is a proud supporter of all Jimmy Athletics. Mark and Cheryl Wolf encourage all players, fans, and coaches to stop by after the game and try their new sweet deal menu. Mix and match your favorites, two for $3, three for 4 and 4 for 5 and Dairy Queen wishes the Jamestown College Jimmy's a great season. DQ, something different. Located at the bottom of Mill Hill, Jamestown. A proud supporter of Jimmy Athletics. Let's roll the interview there. Bud Edsel, the head coach for the Jimmy's coach. Uh, thanks for your time. And before we talk about homecoming, I know it's been a busy week and a lot of things going on that tie in with homecoming football. But uh, let's talk about September. You guys are pretty pleased and happy, I'm sure, pretty pretty glad to, uh, to turn the page on the calendar. Uh, September wasn't too good to the Jimmy's, was it? Well, it was, you know, it was rugged to say the least. Uh, we, uh, you know, obviously our aspirations and our goals are much higher than what we achieved, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, particularly in terms of, you know, uh, winning some football games. Uh, and, uh, you know, the uh, the issues are what they are, and, and uh, you know, we've got to take every step we can, and, but uh, certainly pointing towards, you know, a new month in our, in our, you know, the one game at a time approach at the uh, last six years has, has really been our focus. Coach, when we talked in uh, August and did a preview on the team, you noted right away, you said our September schedule is uh, very brutal. That could be a, a, a make or break month for the uh, for the Jimmies this season. And, uh, and and as we unfortunately saw, we went winless. But, uh, boy, that, that uh, real quality opponents you were up against during the month of September. Well, yeah, and, and you know, but on the other hand, that's that's what you that's what you get involved in this to to play in is those games like that where you're playing you're playing outstanding opponents and in great competition and and uh, you know that's how you that's how you measure where you're at and what you're doing. You know, it's uh, it certainly is a uh, it, it creates a tremendous challenge, but 
but you know that's what uh, we tell people that go into college and all the things are all about to play in those kind of games and, and win them so uh, we're disappointed with the results obviously uh, but uh, but there's some things that we're also very pleased with just hungry to win a football game aren't you that's it you know I mean it's like uh, all other things that go <laughs> that go wrong you need you need that success you know I mean you can always point towards uh, you know the things that you're doing well and the positive aspects of it, but but in the final analysis, uh, you know, you know, success and failure, whether good, bad, or otherwise, is on that scoreboard at uh, at the end of the game, and uh, that's the one thing we haven't been able to accomplish, and and that's certainly been, you know, the only thing we've talked about. You know, last week I caught your uh, post game uh, talk to the team, and uh, you're not really blaming anybody. You're not pointing fingers at a certain position or a certain player. You you feel that uh, the things that have gone wrong are from the top down, don't you? Well, you know, it's, to me, everything falls under two categories to me, productive or not productive. And, and uh, you know, there just comes a point where, uh, you know, whether to chide and chastise and berate uh, people for the obvious is uh, to me is really counterproductive you know you know what are you going to gain from that uh, I think the thing that we try to take away and you never want to get too carried away after a game in any matter just because you know emotions are running high whether it's a elation or depression uh, and uh, you don't want to add to that in either manner you know really our full focus was we had a meeting on Sunday and and the thing I think that we reached the conclusion is one you know nobody is trying to not catch a ball no one is trying to fumble uh, you know no one is trying to throw it to the other team uh, the fact of the matter is is you know with with young guys and even with older guys you watch every game you watch on TV I mean it's more a mindset that you know you want them to be aggressive and you want them to try to get that extra inch. That's football's a real estate game, but you also have to understand the risk and reward and protecting the ball and piles and and that to our receivers, hey, catching it and falling down is still a good play. Uh, to our quarterback, not feel like you've got to take the whole weight of the world in your shoulders and try to stick something in when it isn't there, or you know, or try to be too perfect with everything. And, so it's a fine line you walk, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, trying to take, to move forward, work on the issues uh, has really been what we've tried to get involved with and, and focus on more, that have everybody understand, hey, we're all doing our best. If, if you assume that and you believe that, then it's a lot easier to stay together as a team, and that's really my biggest concern after the success we've had over the last several years when, when you get kicked in the nose uh, four times in a row, uh, staying together is going to be the key element for us, our success down the road here. Bud Edsel on the Jimmy Football pregame show brought to you by Dairy Queen, DQ something different, the bottom of Mill Hill, Jamestown. Uh, Bud, uh, the schedule doesn't get any easier as we head to uh, October, as uh, we see now South Dakota Tech coming in here today. They're undefeated, and uh, they're uh, looked at, at this point, Coach, they look like they're one of the better teams in the conference. This is a this is a good team, both sides of the football, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, the the thing that, you know, you always have to guard against, and we ran into it a little bit going down there last year, is that, you know, people many times base opinions on people on what they've seen in the past, you know, about, after about uh, three years ago, uh, uh, their school made a couple of major changes, which really lended to, you know, what what transpired in their in their in their football program. Number one, they made athletic success a priority. You know, they added to their scholarship base. They also, uh, through their community and things, constructed a beautiful stadium complex. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, weight room, uh, coaches, offices, meeting rooms, and things like that uh, to enhance their physical plan. Uh, and then they also added some uh, liberal arts degree programs, which before, you know, they were, you know, the old thing with South Dakota Tech was that they were uh, an engineering school and had football for guys that just like to play. Well, that's not the case anymore. You know, they, they've made the commitment and... Uh, so I think everyone knew that at some point they'd become a real challenge, and they have quickly, to their credit. And they 
they played a great game against us last year physically, and we had to we had to play uh, our best in order to hold them off down there. So uh, we're looking for a for again a big challenge, uh, a very confident team team that hasn't tasted defeat yet. Um, and uh, you know, but again, that's that's a, that's the kind of teams we want to play. You know, we don't want to play the teams that. Uh, that we don't have to play great against to win. And, and that's the, the thing that we've talked to our guys about a lot, that we don't want the easy win. We don't want to be in the Class F West half softball tournament, you know. We want to play the best teams that we can and play our best against them and measure the success against those kind of people. Coach, they're scoring the most points right now in the conference, and they run the ball better than anybody in the conference. So talk about that. Well, they, they got they return a lot of their offensive linemen, and they have a great running, a great running back, great all-around player in in uh, number four, the Dale boy, and, and uh, you know he was an all-conference player as a freshman last year. So, uh, you know we understand that uh, uh, you know they got some weapons. You know they got the majority of their they were a very young team last year. They're relatively young again this year, and, and uh, uh, so. You know, they got some weapons. They aren't just uh, stumbling, bumbling around to get that done. They uh, And they beat a very, very credible football team in Montana Tech in their opener. And uh, so, uh, you know, they, they've got some weapons, and they have a very confident, high-flying team right now. Uh, so, you know, it's, that's, uh, it, it's certainly not going to be a, a, a show-up and get a win situation. Well, they throw the ball okay, too, but is the goal today, Coach, to stop that run and force them to go to the air? Well, I think regardless of who you play, that's always got to be your focus on defense. You, you have to you have to have your primary plan has to be to stop the run. And because if you stop the run and force them out of their comfort zone, you got to force them out of those uh, second and five, you know, third and three, third and four, where then you can, you know, anybody listening at home or anybody sitting in the bleachers can call the play. Uh, you have to force them into, because, you know, because they have a good running game, their biggest threat passing is their play action game. Uh, so you need to do everything you can to take that away. And uh, if you eliminate or reduce their ability to run the ball and force them to get them out of their comfort zone. That's what always they're trying to do on defense is force them to do something they're not accustomed to doing or would rather not do. Coach, it's homecoming, and I know last week after the game with Minot, you said, hey, uh, it's a big game in various ways. We need a win, but we also just want to show up and have a good game and uh, treat our fans and treat our administration to a, to a good showing against South Dakota Tech. So I know you got some big hopes for today, don't you? Oh, absolutely. You know, every you know the beauty of this game is that every every Monday starts a new week. You know, as long as you have games to play, there's a reason to be excited. You know, uh, you know. Unfortunately, we have to reestablish some goals, uh, in, in which we did on Sunday when we when we worked out and and, and met. And, and uh, you know, uh, you know, obviously with six games to play and four losses. We can still, you know, have a winning season. You know, that's a, that's always should be a primary goal. Uh, you know, and probably the biggest thing is, is that quest to get in. You know, we feel like we've played, and that we have the talent to, you know, uh, to have won every game we played this year. Uh, but you have to prove it at some point. And uh, uh, the opportunity that that we have now is to. You know, uh, win enough games to get into that top four and probably play one of these teams again. And, uh, you know, whether, call it what you want, retribution, uh, redemption, I don't care what you, what term you use, but it gives us a chance to, to reestablish the record there a little bit. And, and I think that you don't get that opportunity in football. You don't play many home and home games the same year, and you don't play many teams twice, and, and you get one shot and over the results. And, and you know, our quest now is to get to that, get to that point where we're playing one of those top teams again at the Jamboree and and uh, and showing what kind of football team we've become by the end of the season. And it's turnovers too, Coach. That's uh, as always going to be gigantic today. Oh well, yeah, my goodness. You know, we we've you know unfortunately, is you know we had we had a, a two or three when we talked you know a couple weeks ago we had some other issues that. I think our guys uh, have taken great steps, the staff and the guy and the, and the players, uh, and we've eliminated some of those other things. And, uh, 
but it's obvious. Uh, it's, you just cannot give a good team the ball uh, on a number of occasions and expect to be successful. You know, it's got to be a, a conscious thing where, you know, we have gotten to the point now where ball security has, it does trump looking for the big player, the big thing, or, you know, the extra yard, you know, hanging out of the ball is more critical than anything to us right now. And, and there's just no mistaking it, no, uh, you know, excusing it, no looking by it. It's just as simple as that. We have to not only not turn the ball over, but we have to catch the ball. You know, I mean, you know, we've had some issues with that, you know, and, and uh, um, you know, but it, like I, as I said when we started, you know, the, the hard thing dealing with turnovers is that, you know, most of the time turnovers are probably – 90 percent mental you know and uh you know you, you can work the fundamentals all you want but when you get in the game and the board and the scoreboard's on and and it's for real there has to be a, fo a mental focus on it you know it has to be something in your thought process uh but by the same token you have to be positive with your guys you know the last thing you want to say every time you snap the ball you can't say hey don't fumble now uh, it's like telling your long snapper hey uh sure you get a good snap here you know those are given things and and so what we've tried to do is focus on it in practice, that you have to have a Saturday mentality on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, and that uh, uh, if we don't catch a ball or if we lay a ball on the ground, uh, you know, and you do goofy things with the coach. You know, we've done stuff, uh, you know, hey, here's the deal. If we turn the ball over, you know, that's, we, go over, we go over to the sidelines and, and say, hey, here's what happens in the game. You're off the field. You're off the field, and uh, these next four players in the script, we're not running because you forfeited your chance to run them because we turned the ball over, or we didn't catch the ball. We didn't catch that third and three pass. So go go to the sidelines and understand that you, you don't get another chance. We're not going to run the play over. And, and in fact, we're not going to run the next three plays because you forfeited those three plays that could have been very successful. And, you do a lot of things psychologically as a coach, and, and but the, the whole focus is to get the guys to understand that, you know, it's just as important to have that focus on Tuesday as it is on Saturday, and you just hope you get the carryover from it. All right, Coach, we wish you luck, and we'll talk to you after the game. Well, we're still excited about this team, Mark, and, and uh, we got some great young players, and, and uh, you know, we're just we're going forward. You know, there's no, there isn't any time to... To lament what has happened, uh, we we got to push forward, and you know, you know, when you said you try to establish values with young men, uh, you got to live them yourself. Uh, and our first value is it's not all about me, and it's not all about each of them individual. It's about all of us, and we're gonna we're gonna sink or swim together. And today we're planning on swimming. All right, coach. Good luck. Thanks a lot, Mark. All right, that's about Edsel on the free game show brought to you by Dairy Queen DQ, something different. Located at the bottom of Mill Hill, the Jimmies will kick off and kick it south. And uh, the uh, Tech uh, Hard Rockers will receive on the south end and head to the north. And at a cloudy sky, temperatures today are expected to be around 50 degrees. Not a whole lot of a wind today, but right now it is at the back of uh, Nygaard as he's got it teed up at his 20-yard line. And look out for the kick return extraordinary. He's deep for South Dakota Tech, and the Jimmies will kick away from him. It's uh, grabbed on the run by the man up close. That's Marshall Davis. He breaks a tackle at the 30, slips and falls at the 37-yard line. And South Dakota Tech will start offensively their own 37. So note to our listeners as well that we had an inch and a half of rain earlier this week. It didn't come in uh, just an hour. It was over a 48-hour period. So the track might be a little bit slippery out there, Bill. But for the most part... Uh, uh, last night I was impressed with how the field held up in Grand Forks, and uh, we got good field positions for the uh, field conditions for this one. Yeah, this is a good turf underneath, so I'm thinking it's going to hold up pretty well. Set our lineups on the fly as Russell comes out of the, uh, the uh, gun, single wideouts either way, inside handoff now squirting outside is Dale can't turn the corner down the line. Pursuit was terrific. Herbis tripped him up and. Fiala finished him off. Jimmy's defensively. Let's set it for Jamestown. Tyler Whipstead up front. No tackle out of Jamestown. Parker Barrett, left defensive end. Sophomore from Tempe, Arizona. Steve Jones, right defensive end. Junior from Gilbert, Arizona. Linebackers Drew Bear from Gillette, Wyoming. And Mike Sandless from Lamore. And Matt Kubler from Fargo. And Dan Fiala from Carson City, Nevada. Here's another snap out of the shotgun formation. It's a double reverse back to the quarterback. Flea flicker. Russell's going to throw a deep coverage. Is there. Castet battling for it. And they're going to call him for pass interference, I believe. He was there and coverage the pass on the flea flicker. Fired deep downfield down the left sidelines for Marshall Davis. 
But a little pushing and shoving between Davis and Castet. And I think they're going to get uh, Castet for pass interference. We'll see. Castet, one of the D-backs for the Jimmies, along with Justin Sampson, Dustin Urbis, and James Bomer. Offensively, while you and I have been talking about this off the air, here's that gigantic offensive line for South Dakota Tech. They have at center Dave Randall, 6'2", 300. Left guard, Colin Williamson, 6'6", 300. Left tackle, Mark Olson, 6'3", 300. Right guard, Todd Sherman, he's the wimp at 6'5", 285. And right tackle is Kane Ree at 6'6", 340. And I say that he's the wimp sarcastically because they're <laughs> massive. They do go with a pass interference on the Jimmies. They did, yep. And you say that because you're up here and he's down there and he can't hear you. <laughs> The quarterback, Russell, will talk more about him. They'll fire it over the middle, and it's a duck intercepted. It's intercepted by Urbis. That was a duck over the middle, underthrown. His intended target was Ostheimer, and Urbis skidding got in front of that foul down, makes the pick at the 25-yard line, so Urbis makes an interception for the Jimmies. And this quarterback, Nick Russell, good numbers. He's out of San Diego, a 5'10", 210 sophomore. That's just the third time this season he's been intercepted. Well, and there you go, Mark. A little pressure from Mar uh, Parker Barrett, the defensive end, number 93, the sophomore out of Tempe. He got in there a little bit on Russell, kind of caused him. I don't know if he got a hit on him as he threw it, but he caused that wobbly pass. It was thrown a little low. Urbis had good position and made the play. Beeler rolling right will throw on first down, down the right sidelines, floats it over the head, incomplete intended target on the far sidelines. Matt Wilson, here's that Jimmy offense. Quarterback Mike Beeler out of Foley, Minnesota. Austin Scholl at fullback out of Minoka, North Dakota. Lance Johansson gets to start a tailback for the injured Jay uh, uh, Tweed, who may be back next week. Johansson's from Devil's Lake. Here's Beeler ready to run another play. Twins to his right, single wide out left, and Johansson in the backfield, flanked to his left hip on second and ten. And they'll run it inside with Johansson trying to get outside. Can he get the uh, edge on the stretch play? Breaks the tackle at the 25, shows a hard run, all that for just a couple of yards. So the Jimmies are looking at uh, third down and about eight. Uh, receivers, Josh Ewalt, he's out of Miles City, Montana. Casey Osauer out of Beulah. Matt Wilson out of Yelm, Washington. Mike Heinzman, the tight end, senior from Andover, Minnesota. The offensive line, Brent Lemire is at center, junior from Harvey. Ryan Hunt at right guard, a junior from Laurel, Montana. Clint McGovern, left tackle. He's a senior out of Mora, Minnesota. Brock Le uh, Lemire is at a left guard. He's a junior from Harvey. And Matt Steiner is at right tackle. Steiner is out of Wharton, Texas. And the kicker's Nate Nygaard. The punter's Craig Anderson for the Jimmies. What do we have here? Do we have a call? A Play flag? clock on the north end went dark, Mark, so they're yep. checking on that right now. So it's third down, and the Jimmies need about eight. They're operating from their own 27, an early turnover for South Dakota Tech, which is uh, uncommon for them, Bill. They're 3-0. We mentioned they're second best in the conference, taking court care of the football. It's good to see the Jimmies come up with a turnover instead of commit one. Well, you bet, and, and that, that can be a real lift, your defense for your offense. And Russell, of course, you said, hasn't thrown many of those picks. But, again, if you bring pressure, you got a good quarterback. The one thing you want to do is try to either disrupt him or disrupt the receivers or both. And I thought that time the Jimmies did a pretty good job of bringing, got some pressure out of the natural rush, and that led to the bad throw or the off-target throw and a good play by Urbis, who had good position. And really, I thought also the play before on the interference, Casted had good position but just couldn't slow himself down and kind of did one of those excuse me in the back, and you get a penalty for it. Urbis out of Colfax leads the conference in tackles. He's having a great year. Trips left, single wide out right. It's Bo on the far side. Third and eight, low shotgun snap. It's on the ground, and South, South Dakota Sec, Texas, they have it, and they do. Bad shotgun snap, and it's recovered in the backfield by South Dakota Tech. Pouncing on that football is Joel... Uh, Burl, Joel Burl comes up with uh, the football and another turnover for the Jimmies. Yeah, that's uh, just one of those deals. And I, I do see some slipping out there. I noticed a few of the Tech guys coming out of their stances. They just didn't get it. And I also think we had some problems with Dealer once he had to go forward to get the ball. He didn't get going forward in time to get down on it. So Burl comes up with a fumble recovery, and out of the shotgun, here's Russell. They'll set up a bubble screen, left flat, caught by Olsheimer. Jimmy's down the line, great pursuit there, and they shove him out of bounds in a hurry. Breaking through tackles, Drew Bear. Minimal gain, about a yard is all on that little bubble screen left side of the field. But just underway, each team has committed a turnover. Tech's second possession now, and they take over near the Jimmy Red Zone at the 21-yard line. I think we're going to check on Burl to see if that isn't Lucini, number 49 in the roster, 41. He's listed as 41 on the depth chart, so we'll double-check that. Okay, toss sweep coming around the right side. It's Dale, and he can't find the edge. He'll cut back inside, and he's wrapped up in a hurry and brought down. There for Jamestown is the linebacker, Gareth Ives. Dale just ducked his head and said, all right, I'm going to just lower the pads and see how much uh, I can uh, sneak through this big pile of players. Picked up a couple, got to the 19-yard uh, line, so Jimmy defense has been tough up front so far. Third down and about seven for uh, the South Dakota Tech hard, hard rockers at the Jimmy 19-yard line. Gain will go for just a yard. 
Twins left from the shotgun. Here's Russell. Nick is a 5'10", 210-pound uh, sophomore out of San Diego. Shotgun snap, a good one. He's got a pocket. He'll fire underneath. Got his man. Bielstein over the middle. Bielstein inside the 10. And he's dropped at the 9-yard line. First and goal coming up for the Hard Rockers. Herbis on the tackle. Fiala also there for Jamestown on the tackle. James Volmer. Uh, it's just a little drag across. They showed two receivers left that time and just went to the backside on that crossing route, and it was open underneath because what you really had is a pretty good athlete running against a linebacker, and typically offense, especially if there's a little question on footing, offense is going to have the advantage out there when it's one-on-one. Tech's going to stay with the spread here. They also spread things out, go no huddle, single wide out either way. Two tight ends now from the gun, and it's a handoff inside. And Dale trying to come right up the middle, not much. And he ran to that Jimmy interior defensive line and got about a yard on forward progress at best. And Jones was there for the Jimmies to lead that charge. Cast it, pounced in there as well. No gain on the play. Second goal at the nine. Well, and this is one of those situations, Mark, where as a defense, you just line up and you say three is all they're going to get. You know, you got to be tough between the tackles. But then we mentioned the pocket passing type of thing. So you look for those slants and fades, kind of the Jordan Piotts version like last night. Dale in the backfield on the center. Russell, he'll give it to Dale. Stretch play coming left. Can't find any room back inside to the six. And he's crunched there. Ran back inside and was greeted by Tyler Wibstead. Forward progress about a yard, so it is third and goal. Ball is right around the six yard line of the Jimmies. Each team with an early turnover in the first couple of minutes of the football game. That was a good job by one of my Gilbert guys that time, Jonesy. Steve Jones, the defensive end, broke in quick, kind of out of control, but he really got off the football well, broke that thing up, kind of wrecked the timing, if you will, and then the pursuit led by Wibstead kind of cleaned up. Five touchdowns, three picks now for Russell, picked off early in this one, and he averages 200 yards a game through the air. Third and goal, ball is at the seven yard line. Russell goes to the gun. He's got twins left. Jimmy's offside. Free play. Snap over the head of Russell. He'll fall on it. No, now he overran it. It's still loose. And the Jimmy's fall on it at the 29-yard line. But it's not going to hold up. Fumble recovery made by Parker Barrett. Russell fell on it. It popped out. Then Barrett fell on it at the 30-yard line. But for the Jimmy's offside on the right side, I think it was uh, for Jamestown College coming across too soon, was Drew Bear. Yeah, he, the Jimmy's definitely jumped over on the far side, and that's just, boy, weren't we talking just in the pregame about, you know, when you have your penalties, or I guess we were talking turnovers, but here's a penalty at what an inopportune time, because it had nothing to do with the play. It had absolutely nothing to do with it, but the Jimmy's were offside. You get a bad snap, you get a break, you get a recovery, and all for naught. All the way, that ball squirted back to the 30, but the play will not stand. We'll do it over offside on Jamestown, half the distance. So it's third and goal, and the ball is now right around the five-yard line for South Dakota Tech. They're unbeaten at 3-0. Jamestown sports a record of 0-4 coming into this homecoming football game for the Jimmies. Jimmies in all black today. Jerseys and pants, orange helmet. Tex got on the gold helmets, the white jerseys, and the navy blue pants. Under center is Russell. On third and goal, just inside the five. Play action fake. He's rolling right, looking end zone, still rolling. Throws for the back of the end zone and out the back of the end zone. Great coverage. Jimmy's did not bite on the play action fake. The pass in the back of the end zone for Everett Brill. Way over his head incomplete. So let's see if Tech will try an early field goal in this one. Well, that time they went with the two wide outs left again. The tight end was on the right side, Bielstein. They, ran, they lined up a guy by the name of Zach Looney. Wears number 74 in the backfield to the right side in a broken eye. Six foot 270. So now you got about 2,000 pounds of guys there. There. Tried to go with a play action, but it was defended very well by the Jimmies on the near side. Andy Smith, the kicker, 13 for 13 extra points, 5 for 7 kicking field goals, and he's from Naples, Florida. And he'll try one from 21. Right-footed sidewinders ready. Snap, good placement, good kick is up, and it is good. And South Dakota Tech takes advantage of the early Jimmy fumble and takes a 3-0 lead with 10.47 to go in the first quarter. We'll have the kickoff in 30 seconds on your Jimmy football connection. 1,400 KQDJ Jamestown. All right, we're back at uh, Greenville Field, the campus of Jamestown College. It's homecoming. Jimmy's have fallen behind 3-0, a turnover. Andy Smith then hits a 21-yard field goal. Good job by the defense. They're put in a tough spot there with Tech taking over at the Jimmy 21, but they hold the uh, Hard Rockers to three. We got a shower going on right now. Boy, that's uh, got to feel pretty nippy. 
Here's the kickoff by Smith. High and short into that north wind. Grabbed on the run by Ewald at the 25-30. 35-40 finds a crack, and he's out to the 42-yard line. Little seam in there. Finally brought down on special teams, uh, Tyler Barth, who plays fullback as well. Great field position for the Jimmies with a rain shower and some pretty nippy winds out there. Temperatures today only in the 40s. So what a difference a week makes. Last week up in Minot, we had 80 degrees. Oh, God, you and I were dying up there. It was, <laughs> I was hot. I could hardly stand it up there. And we were in that little box, and here we are in a big open area, and it's cool. But this still isn't as bad as I thought it might have been today. As Beeler out of the gun, trips to his right single wide out left. Jimmy's down early, 3 nothing inside Gibbs Johansson, and he's popped hard right at the line of scrimmage and driven back. Backwards. Boy, he was taken head on, and a big tackle made by Tyrell Anderson, 5'11", 210 pound linebacker. He's a senior out of Green River, Wyoming. Relatively, this is still a young football team for South Dakota Tech. And they're off to a great 3 0 start this season. Gain of two on forward progress for Johansson. Again, Jay Tweed hurt his leg. We saw that last week in Minot. They're going to hold him out this week. Maybe a question mark for next week. We'll see what happens. For Jay Tweed, leads the team in rushing and also. Receiving yardage, all-purpose yardage. Trips to the right, Beeler looking right on second and seven. He'll step up in the pocket, great protection. Fires it deep, he's got a man out there and overshot him. Hassauer got behind the D-backs. That was really a broken play, so Hassauer just said, the heck with it, I'm going to go deep. You've got plenty of protection. And the old throw it long, the home run ball, but it sailed incomplete. A bit of a wind at the back of Beeler right now. So it is third down. The Jimmy still need about eight. What a great pocket he had. He did. He had good time. There was good coverage down there. But as you said, after he broke the pocket, Hausauer was streaking deep. I thought he was going to keep going. But Casey broke the route off just about the time that Beeler threw the football. As a result, it was really a better thrown ball than it looked. Trips right. Single wide out left. Bow on the near side. Ewalt, Wilson, Hausauer all on the far side. Third and eight. Shotgun snap. A good one. Four-man rush. Good blocking. Beeler throws a wobbly pass. Caught behind the D-backs. Wilson. He caught it at the 25, got to the 20. Boy, that was kind of a wobbly duck, but it got through some traffic. And in stride, Ewald caught it, and he was caught from behind, finally, and dragged down a touchdown-saving tackle made by the Hard Rockers' Tom Lundsman. Well, it wasn't a pretty tight spiral, but it was sure a good touchstone with some authority, too, because that ball traveled down the field. They're going to spot it at the 20. 35-yard pickup. Into the red zone come the Jimmies down early, 3 nothing, but on the move, trips left for Beeler, single wide out right. Three-man front right now for the Hard Rockers in the backfield out of the shotgun formation. Flank to the right of Beeler is the freshman running back, Johansson. Low snap again. The Beeler digs it out, looking left, looks over the middle. He got a man wide open. Ewald, touchdown, Jimmy's. Ewald got in the end zone, ran a little skinny post. Nobody picked him up. Beeler had all day to throw. Touchdown, rather, Matt Wilson. Matt Wilson on the touchdown catch. And he got behind everybody, and the pass protection was fantastic. Yeah, you bet. Good protection, and I can't say enough about Mike Beeler after the frustration of last week. You know, his dauber was down a little bit, but he comes right back and makes two great throws on it. Good protection up front. Tech Mark has been pretty vanilla on defense in that three-man front. You're seeing three men, four backers, and then the three deep, and they're just kind of vanilla out there and the Jimmy's taking advantage of it without any pressure. Well that didn't take long. Four plays it covers 58 yards and Nygaard nails the point after. Jamestown leads 7-3 to three, and we've only played five and a half minutes off to a quick start in this one. The kickoff in 30 seconds on your Jimmy football connection. 1400 KQDJ Jamestown. Apologies. Since 1954, White's Toyota has been providing Central North Dakota with professional service and excellent customer care. Whether you're shopping for a new Toyota or good or used late model vehicle, you can be assured that you'll be treated with respect and offered the best deal possible. And don't forget their award-winning parts and service department, offering four-wheel alignments, air conditioning service, tire sales, tune-ups, and Astro Start sales and installation. Call 252-4690, stop by on the road to the Buffalo in Jamestown, or visit Lloyd'sToyota.com. Touchdown pass pulled in by Matt Wilson. Boy, was he open. Just kind of ran a skinny post. And nobody stayed with him. Nygaard's kickoff, and it's a bad one. It hits at the 25 and goes out of bounds. He hooked that one badly. So Tech will have good field position. And a touchdown for the Jimmies to come right back after an early turnover. Made it 3-0. Beeler hooks up. Wide open receiver in the end zone. Matt Wilson. He's out of Yelm, Washington. Matt, 6-2. Sophomore at 210. I understand his brother Tyler is also a Jamestown College student, is currently serving our country. He's overseas fighting in the war. So, Tyler, maybe you're latched into the uh, webcast. Thanks for all you do for our freedom. And you're pretty happy about your brother making a touchdown catch, I bet. 
First down and 10 from his own 40-yard line. They got a toss sweep. Here come the Hard Rockers to the right with Dale. Can he get outside on the stretch play? He's popped hard at the 41. Up to smack him for Jamestown. Justin Sampson, he ran all the way across the field to Dale, coming left to right, trying to find his seam here on the near side, but... Jamestown, with great pursuit down the line, did not allow him any kind of a gap. Yeah, the Rockers, Mark, really attacking the edge, which to me is unusual. you got about 1,500, 1,600 pounds in the middle there, and you're not running between the tackles. You're running the toss stuff, trying to go off the edge. I think the Jimmies would take that all day long because they are pursuing very well from the secondary and linebacker. Dale leads the conference in rushing 127 yards per game, but so far the Jimmies have done a, a nice job on him, second and ten. Hard Rockers from their own 40. Now a little ray of sunshine poking through. Jimmy's came offside again. And a handoff off right tackle. And it gave him about four on the play. But the Rockers are going to take the penalty. It's Jamie Dale coming off the right side for about four. But Jimmy's defensive line, I think it's more linebackers, uh, Bill. Not, not so much the defensive line. They're coming across too soon. Yeah, outside linebackers, and that, you know, you don't know if you're getting that hard count. It's tough to tell from up here if you're getting a hard count going or what the deal is, why they're jumping around. But I think it's one of those deals where the offense is going to go on two. You get a hard count on one. And defensively, if you're listening, you know, instead of looking, you got to plug the ears and you got to wait for movement. And I think the Jimmies are just reacting on that first sound. Obviously, Tech will take the penalty. The gain was for four, so you'll take the penalty and keep the down. So it's second down and five. Ball is at the 45 of the Rockers. Russell stays out of the gun. And an inside handoff. And trying to find, again, a little daylight. Not much for Dale. Again, really plugged up right at that defensive line over the center of that offensive line and defensive line over the football. Dale over, able to knife ahead for a couple. And on the tackle for Jamestown was Parker Barrett, defensive end out of Tempe, Arizona. Gain will go for three. So it's third down and two for the Rockers. Just shy of the midfield stripe. The 50-yard line will be a first down. Well, the difference between the two defenses are both a three-man front, but you'll see the Jimmies bring your outside backers up to the line of scrimmage. Back in my day, we called this a 5-2. Russell will stay with the gun. Third and two. Shotgun snap on the money. Pass caught on the near side. Flat coming down the sidelines to the 45 of the Jimmies. Off the catch, the fullback, Tyler Barth. He picks up seven and a first down. Took a good hit as well. Urbis was there. Samson also in the mix for Jamestown. Tyler Keenan. Well, nice job by Russell and the offensive line that time. The Jimmies brought the blitz up the middle with the inside linebacker and the two outside guys. They picked the blitz up well, and they had just enough time to get the throw off. 7-3 Jimmies. A touchdown pass moments ago. 20-yarder from Mike Beeler to Matt Wilson. Put the Jimmies up 7-3. First and 10, Jimmy 45, high shotgun snap. It's brought down by the quarterback, Russell, inside handoff. Again, right up the middle comes Dale. And this time he keeps the legs churning, picks up about four. And Urbis, bottom of that pile for Jamestown, also there for the tackle. Mike Sandness out of Lemoore, the junior, 6'2", 210, gain of three. Yeah, Dale not real big, 5'9", 180, but I'll tell you what, Urbis hit him, and Dale just kept the legs going, but he didn't get anywhere. When Urbis hits you, you're pretty much stuck out there. Second down and seven, the ball is at the 42 of Jamestown, headed to the north, left to right on your radio dial, South Dakota Tech. They go with the no huddle, twins left. And it's a double tight end formation. Shotgun snap to Russell. He's got protection. Now he's flushed and he runs right into the Jimmy's defensive end. Parker Barrett who sacks him back at the 49-yard line. But he was flushed on the far side, the blind side, by Kurt Holinka, I believe. Yeah, that might have been also uh, Drew Bear coming in from that far side in 91, Holinka. They did the job from the right side, kind of pushed in this direction. And Parker Barrett just kind of stuck the nose, uh, nose right into the... Uh, the rib cage of the of the quarterback on that time. Negative seven, back to the 48 yard line. It's third down, about 13 for the Rockers. Single wideouts either way, and Russell will stay with the gun in the backfield. He has playing to his left, Jamie Dale, and look out for him. They all loop out of the backfield and make catches as well. Russell has a good shotgun snap this time. He comes underneath, crossing pattern and drop. Good throw in stride. He had his target, but Andrew Isom dropped the football at the Jimmy 35-yard line. The coverage was pretty tight, but that was catchable. Yeah, that was, and that might have been 88 instead of 89. I think it is 88 as Daniels, but he just ran that short post, and the ball was on the money, and that's one you expect your receiver to fight for and, and come down with it. But it, it looked to me like it went through his hands into the pads and down. So 88 is playing. I took it as 89. I was told 88 was a scratch prior to the game. Unless it's ism in the uh, different shirt. Here's the punts. First punt of the game for the Rockers. Colton Jeldon, who's the transfer from Wyoming. Caught by Joe Hansen, trying to reverse his field, goes to the right, 20-25, and special teams coverage pretty good for the Hard Rockers. Not much on the return. Jimmy start at their 25-yard line and down there for South Dakota Tech. Jonathan uh, Tristeo, and Tristeo is listed as a tight end sophomore out of Hilmer, California. 
Well, 6.09 to go in the first mark, 7-3, to three, Jimmy Lead. You got the football back at your own 25. That last drive, as you kind of alluded to, what was with just four plays, seemed a little too easy. So now you got to come out, and if it's easy, great. But if it's not, see if you can grind something out and establish a little bit of swagger with the Jimmy offense. Well, Beeler threw a touchdown pass to Wilson. Last time the Jimmys had the ball, they covered 20 yards. Trips left, twins right, spread offense, five receiver formation, three-man front for Tech, and they show a blitzing linebacker. They back off. Underneath it comes, quick pass over the middle, caught by the Jimmies at the 30-yard line, a quick little curl route there. And hauling that one in was Max Bull. Bull picks up five, maybe six, just a safe little, little hurts, a little curl on that uh, right hash mark. Jimmies will run another play real quick. Second down and about four operating from their own 31, headed to the south, right to left. It's Beeler in the Jimmy offense, the junior college transfer out of Foley, Minnesota, says he's ready. And it's a quarterback draw. 30 to the 32, not much. Maybe a yard, and he ran right into the uh, the big linebacker who makes the tackle. That's Andrew Isom, who I just listed as making a reception moments ago. Isom makes the tackle. Yeah, and that, that was just a blitz. That's the first time I've seen blitz. Lucini went on the other side, and, and Beeler fortunately did not run the draw into him. He ran away, but he still got stuck pretty good. Third and two from the gun is Beeler. Trips right, twins to his left, and he barks off the play from a shotgun formation. Jimmy's up 7-3, five minutes left in the first quarter. Homecoming for Jamestown. A little sunshine peeking through right now, but mainly an overcast day. Look for the quick slant. They got it, and oh, low throw, and unable to catch it. Ewald tried to make a skidding catch at the 40. He was open. Throw a bit low, and it came out incomplete, so the Jimmy's on fourth and two bring out the punt team. Yeah, that one is just plain and simply on Mike Beeler. He just kind of heard it a little bit didn't get the feet set and and when you do that sometimes you hang on to the ball too long when you hang on too long it goes down at the shoelaces instead of in the numbers because there was a lot of room there no defense around Tom Lundsman leads the conference in punt returns at 16.7 per game here he is Anderson booms a beautiful spiral and it gets over the head of Lundsman it goes back to the 10 he retreats hauls it in back at the 80 slips and now he's hit and he's tied up and down he goes what a kick by Anderson and on special teams for Jamestown on the tackle is Reed Hoganson, or Hoganson, rather, Reed Hoganson. He's out of Leeds, North Dakota. He got down there first. That's going to be a 60-yarder mark. I think it rolled down to about the 7. So if you put, you go uh, 43 there and another 17, the ball was spotted on the 33, and then you think he was back another 10 yards. That was a beautiful kick. That's what I think that's the best Jimmy punt we've seen in a heck of a long time. It was a perfect spiral. It had good hang time, and it had some distance. Now you want Lundsman was hanging out around the 30. All of a sudden, that went over his head. He turned tail, and he couldn't get there. Finally tracked it down, and then he was surrounded from the goal line out of his own end zone. Here's Russell ready to operate the offense out of the shotgun. Inside handoff to Barth. That's his first carry, and he dives ahead to the 10, picks up a yard, maybe two. Running game so far has been uh, pretty tough for Tech. They lead the conference in rushing, but the Jimmy's really plugging things up. Fiala in on the tackle. Well, that time they did attack up the middle, but as you said, the Jimmy's stuffed it pretty good with their inside backers and also uh, Wibstead at the nose that time being given some resistance. But the Rockers on offense, pretty tight splits. When they do run up the middle, they don't really create much of a lane to run. If you widen them out a little bit, you give Dale a little more room to slither through. Russell under center, Dale the lone setback, twins left, toss sweep coming left with Dale. Urbis is there, makes him come back inside, and now he's whacked hard. Urbis made him come inside. Robert Nelson, the linebacker, nails him right around the 10-yard line. Gain of uh, just a yard on the play. So it is third down and about seven. The Jimmys, like you said, uh, Tech has won that stretch play quite often. The Jimmys so far have forced most of the running backs for Tech to come back inside, unable to get the edge. You bet. And, and it seems to be what Tech likes to do. Of course, we don't scout them or anything, but short splits, trying to get the defense in nice and tight to the center, and then try to toss the ball to Dale and try to get the edge for him. The Jimmys defended well so far. Twins either way on third and seven, and Russell, shotgun, snap at the five. Flags are down. I think the Jimmys came across offside again. Here's a quick out caught by Ostheimer, and he finds the first down mark. Parker, and he's chased out of bounds around the 20-yard line, the 19. That'll be enough for a first down, but I think Jamestown offside for the third time of the game. That's the case. The Rockers will decline, and they'll take the gain on the play, which is good for a first down, a pickup of eight. Yeah, the preliminary signal from the headlinesman over on the far side was offside Jimmy's, and of course, Russell's telling the official, never mind, we'll take it up at the 19 instead of at the 16, and we'll take our first down. First down for the Rockers that started at their own seven off a great punt by Anderson of Jamestown. And then a first down for the Rockers through the air. Clock is down to 3.21 to go in the first quarter. Jamestown on top, 7-3 to on a Beeler 20-yard touchdown pass as he hooked up with Wilson. Twins either way from the shotgun formation. 
Here is Russell. Good snap, good protection. Now he's flushed, rolling right, and he finds on a quick out at the 25-yard line, kind of checked down and find on the near sidelines Tony Ostheimer. Ostheimer, minimal gain, got about three, maybe four, and uh, there for Jamestown was Nelson. Yeah, and Sampson also from the corner did a good job. Is really, I think Russell wanted to throw a little earlier, but the nose guard that time, Wibstead, got it in there, almost got to him, got the hand up, made him pull it back down, then he fired it a half second later, and by that time, pretty good recovery by the secondary of the Jimmys. What a rapidly moving first quarter. We're down to 240 left. Jimmys ahead, seven, three trips left now for Russell. He'll get under center. Fake hand off the bar, rolling left play action, looking downfield. Sets, can't throw, and he's sacked. He's hammered back at the 19-yard line, and the ball came up, but the officials are going to say that he was down on the sack for Jamestown, Robert Nelson. Yeah, Nelson came pursuing from the stunt that time, came all the way from his inside linebacker spot to turn it down. But over on the outside, we have to give a lot of credit to Jones over there. He did the job of kind of containing the thing, holding it inside, and allowing Nelson to just run the quarterback down from behind. That's the second sack of the game for Jamestown on Russell. Third down, and about 12 now for the Rockers as they're forced back to their own 18-yard line. They've been pretty good at taking care of their quarterback. We talked about that on the pregame. Right. And uh, as a matter of sacks against, he's only been sacked four and a half times the entire season. And Jimmy's, the Jimmy's have struggled with that. Right. And with third down conversions, their opponents converting on them. Puts us on, and uh-oh, great call. It's a draw, and loose is Dale. 30, 40, 50, gets outside to the 40, down the sidelines, back inside, 35, 30. Jimmy's still chasing to the 25, and finally caught at the 23-yard line. What a brilliant call. Jamestown blitz. On third and long, and it was a draw play, and all these Jimmy linebackers that were blitzing had run right past Dale by the time he got the football. Yeah, great call into that defense. That if they had a couple of guys in position to make the play, maybe out around the 40-yard line, and, and uh, did not make it, just kind of lost their footing and went down, and we have to credit Dale with making some good open field moves, and then he just had a really nice Ooh. run for the last 30 yards or so. Well, we had contained him pretty good till this point. That's a 59-yard run. He leads the conference at 127 per game. Russell will go with the gun as the ball is at the Jimmy 22-yard line. Quick out, caught, out of bounds after the catch is Marshall Davis right around the 15-yard line, and that's good for another seven. So Tech trying to get the lead right back. Jimmy's ahead 7-3, but here come the Hard Rockers down the field. 90 seconds left. That's a gain of eight on the play. 90 seconds left, first quarter. Jimmy's up 7-3. Russell ready to run another play. Looks in the right flat near side. Barth swings it out. He's to the 10, inside the 10. Breaks a tackle at the 5, still going. Gets to the 1. Boy, a tough run after the catch there. Finally brought down by the Jimmys, Tyler Keenan. Right around the two-yard line, they'll say, his knee went down. First and goal for the Rockers. Yeah, this just hadn't been a real good series, Mark, for the Jimmy defense in terms of really uh, assignments, first of all, but especially the tackling thing, getting broken down and making the play. There's been some missed tackles, and they've led to some really big hard rocker plays. Well, the good news here, Dale's off the field. He's still winded after that long run. Got the big guys in there right now. Kind of the old jumble package here. Huh? Well, they're going to run behind him. Gibb coming off the right side. Not much there for Everett Brill. He is driven backwards, and he was taken head on by Sandness. Jones was there as well. No gain and lost a couple of yards on the play, as a matter of fact. Tenth play of the drive coming up. This started at the Hard Rocker 7 off the great punt by Anderson. We're down to 50 seconds left in the first quarter. 7-3 Jimmys. Tech ready to run another play. Jumbos are going to leave. Looney, 74, is a 270-pound. He comes in as a blocking back. And then Brill, of course, is the inside linebacker. He's at 220 who carried the ball that time. From the shotgun, here is uh, Russell. He's got single wideouts. Either way, high snap brings it down. Inside handoff. Crossing the 5, getting to the 4-yard line. Rajo, I believe, got the carry. His first of the game for South Dakota. That up there. And he swung down the yard line. Grab from behind by the Jimmy. He's got a bear hug by Drew Bear. He brings him down to the touchdown. Fourth and goal four. Very fast, rapidly moving football game so far. The Jimmy's have 7 3 after 15 minutes. Homecoming for the Jimmy's. We'll come back with a kick, or rather, with the second quarter in 30 seconds on KQDJ Jamestown. Harvest Acre Reminder from TMT Farms. Lloyd McKenzie with Schaefer Oil reminds everyone that combine safety should be on every harvester's mind. For a safer harvest, keep a fresh fire extinguisher on each combine and never refuel a hot combine. A harvest safety reminder from Boyd McKenzie, your Schaefer Oil representative. Here's the 
Here's Scott Cork and Daryl Licker, Jamestown. Scott, a lot going on this weekend. Yeah, there is. Hey, college homecoming in town. Be a lot of people. We got non-resident waterfall opening up. We got antelope opening out west, I believe. So a lot of hot seasons open and football's in full swing. And hey, we got back to bike. Back for the second quarter, the Rockers will go for a field goal at Smith. Right-footed sidewinder. This will be a 21-yarder. He has a 21-yarder in the game already. Snap good, placement good. And the kick is up, and the kick is good. So the first play of the second quarter, Tech uh, slices the uh, Jimmy lead down to 7-6. to six. They got as far as the 5-yard line. They started at their own 7. In 11 plays, they move it into field goal position. So the field goal is good from 21 yards out for Smith, his second 21-yard field goal of the game. We'll come back with the kickoff in 30 seconds on 1400 KQDJ Jamestown, your Jimmy Football Connection. This is Rocky Balboa with the Power on Wheels mobile DJ service. They really got the music. The Beatles, Buddy Holly, Prince, Billy Idol, even the Hokey Pokey and the Chicken Dance. Here from Elvis to Nelly, Rockefeller rocks. You're a bomb, Rocky, but the power on wheels rocks. If you're planning a party, a wedding, a reunion, I recommend you call Jason Rockefeller, 490-1878, 490-1878, or go on the web at thepoweronwheels.com. Joe Nathan. For three decades, Twins fans have watched Well, that started at the Tech 7, so they go 88 yards in 11 plays and, and get a 21-yard field goal by Smith, but... We'll, uh, we'll talk about this after the kickoff. Smith is ready. Boy, these uh, these guys must have uh, dinner appointments or something. They're not giving us any time to hardly talk in this football game outside of the plays. There's a big return coming up the left sidelines and down the sidelines. Loose is Ewald. 50, 40 to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, and he goes all the way. It looked kind of harmless when he fielded that football way back here at the 20-yard line, but he found a seam, bounced outside, got the tech sideline at the 40, and he's gone for a touchdown, and the Jimmys extend the lead. Yeah, you're right, Mark. Looked pretty routine. They had kind of a wedge return up the left hash mark. And, and really what he did is Ewald ran just kind of into a pile of defenders and, and blockers up there and got in there and found just must have been a little bit of a gap, got through it. And then I think a few hard rockers misunderstood uh, uh, or, or did not correctly estimate his speed because when he came out of there, he took the angles away from a couple would-be tacklers and made it all the way. Officially, they say 94-yard kickoff return. And here's Nygaard for the point after. It is up, and it is good, and Jamestown leads 14-6. to We got a shootout going on here. The second quarter, we played 15 seconds, Bill, and we've seen a field goal and a touchdown in that 15-second span. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if you like scoring, but uh, and special teams, you know, that's good special team play, and I was kind of looking at the guys up front. Uh, Bizey and some of those guys. The Jimmy's employ up front, and you watch high school games, it's a little different. But they got a bunch of defensive backs in that front five, and then they put their big guys back in the next couple of lines, a pair of tight ends probably, and, of course, Wibstead back there. And we remember his famous return last year. And, and then you put your quick guys in the back. But that time, they just executed that beautifully over to the far sideline. And, uh, you know, you can't beat anything like that to kind of get you feeling a little bit better about how things are going. Well, Ewald battled injuries last year. But now we see him return a kickoff 94 yards for a touchdown. Sophomore from Miles City, Montana. And he's got some nice yardage this year when it comes to kickoff returns. We're talking about the man who leads the conference in kickoff returns in this football game. And, uh, of course, he plays for South Dakota Tech. But Ewalt now showing his numbers are going to go up quite a bit, too. Well, Ewalt was on his way last year as a receiver. And I think it was a foot injury that hampered yeah. him. And then he finally had to get out of there and shut down the season. But he was really coming on as a receiver. So it's good to see him get on track with a big return in the special teams. Jamie Dale, who averages 24 per kickoff return. Very short kick. High in the air. Up man's got it. Nearly coughed it up at the 38. It almost came out. Very high, short kick for Nygaard. And one of the up men came up the field that football for South Dakota Tech. It's Tom Lundsman. And he has dropped around the 38-yard line. He juggled that. He did, and believe it or not, uh, I'm not sure that the sun didn't affect him a little bit. It looked like he kind of lost sight of it just at the last minute, kind of like an outfielder at the Metrodome losing it in the lights. Is that the intent here? The Jimmys purposely are kicking these high and short to keep the uh, ball away from well, Jamie I Dale? I, I wouldn't think so. They've got a good leg out there. I would think they'd be trying to boom it deep, but that could be. Play action fake to Dale. Russell rolling right, and he looks deep, and he fires it long. It's up for grabs, and Urbis nearly picked off his second ball of the game. The intended receiver, Tony... Ostheimer turned into the D-back and broke that one up. 
Yeah, nice play, good double coverage that time as they had Herbis on the inside and, and underneath the receiver. And also the uh, Jimmys that time had the corner, Justin Sampson, running behind. Getting back to that kick, though, that might be the strategy to keep it away from Dale, obviously. But I would think a, b a better way to go about that might be to just kind of line drive or scoop that thing down the field. Well, in that first quarter, Tech ran 23 plays to Jamestown's 9, but the Jimmys lead early in the 4th, 14-6. Russell fires long and nearly picked off by Urbis again. And he was flushed and hit as he threw. Kubler was in there harassing him, and Urbis almost had another interception. He picked one off early in this game in back-to-back -back plays. He almost came up with his second of the ball game. Now, a good safety play by Urbis that time. His old timer was just trying to run that post, and he got into a good drop and was right there, read the quarterback's eyes. And good pressure from Kubler from the right linebacker spot. They ran a little X stunt or twist stunt over on the edge. Kubler came through unblocked and did try to motor down. He kind of settled in there a little bit to get pressure in the face of the quarterback. Trips right, twins left, five receivers set for the quarterback. Russell, shotgun snap is a good one. Jimmy's rush three. Pass underneath, and it's slow and incomplete. Trying to make a low shoe top catch and not successful at it was uh, Andy Rogers. And he had a first down if he hangs on, but it wasn't all his fault. Again, that throw was pretty low on the turf here at Greeno Field. By that time, the Jimmys dropped off everybody, three man rush, but Zach Govig, the 5'10, 275 pound sophomore, knows how to Crosby off of the twist, got some late pressure on the quarterback, Russell. And Colton Jeldon will punt it away to return Johansson. A little wind out his back now as he's kicking it south, and it's a wobbly spiral. Bounces at the 25, and Johansson will let it go. It rolls inside the 15, and it dies at the 11. And for good measure, to touch it down right there is Tom Lundsman. Jimmy's will start in a hole, but they're up 14 to 6 with 14-14 to go. Jamestown is headed to the north, left to right on your radio dial here at Greeno Field. Homecoming. We've had plenty of fireworks in this one already. Well, and there's the deal. You know, Johansson, a, a redshirt freshman out of Devil's Lake. Single safety is the toughest job in football if you ask me, at the college level. And like you said, the ball hits around the 25, and you want to catch that thing, even if you can fair catch it and fall down. In this instance, you save about 14 yards. So Hansen in the backfield from the shotgun. It's Beeler. He's got twins on the near side, Hassauer and Ewald. Inside handoff, and the carry is across the 15 to the 17-yard line on the give to Brian Renfro. I believe, is that 28? Did I catch that number right? 28. Renfro, yeah. yeah. And Renfro is listed as a D-back, but the senior out of Las Vegas gets a handoff. And he finds some room up the middle. He picks up five on the play. And Beeler will get under center with twins to the right, single wide out left. Second down and four for Jamestown operating deep at its own end at its 16. It's Renfro again. Nope, they pick it to Renfro. Here's the pitch and trying to turn the corner. Not much left there for Johansson. Gang tackled as he fought to get to the line of scrimmage. And a host of South Dakota Tech players in on that tackle. About six or seven white jerseys all over him, so we don't even know where to start with the uh, tackle with Josh Sherman. Okay, we have uh, a, a different, we have a number change. Uh, Midhaugen is 28. There's duplicate numbers there. I just checked with Tracy Erickson on that. He is a 6'1", 195-pound freshman running back out of Fergus Falls, Minnesota. That's Matt Mithaugen. Mithaugen, okay. So we're so seeing some depth this week with the injury to Jay Tweed. And Mithaugen, by the way, is a true freshman. A true freshman on the field today. So Bud Etzel did tell me yesterday he may see some time. Trips to the right, single wide out left on third down and three for Beeler. He'll work out of the gun. Hostower comes in motion. Flags are down on the snap of the football. Looks like an illegal procedure here on the Jimmies. They had too many guys going before the snap of the football. Here's the call. And possibly the play clock ran out too here. It is delay of game. Delay of game, Jamestown. So now got it. Uh, Bill, three, third and three now becomes third and eight. That changes the whole play. It does, and you know, these, those are the kind of things that, you know, you got to hold the quarterback. you got to say, doggone it, we got to get up there. we got to get a run. Now, here we go again. The clock starts, and we're still checking the play on the sideline. But those are not the kind of errors. Every once in a while, you're going to get a hold or a clip or a pass interference, maybe a face mask where you're trying to make plays. But delay a game is one of those plays that it just, it just shouldn't happen uh, in any circumstance. Okay, five receiver formation. And from the gun on third down and eight, here's Beeler. Jimmy's are up 14. To 6, 1232 to go in the second quarter. Ewald just returned to kickoff for Jamestown moments ago for a touchdown from 94 yards. And again, Jamestown with the play clock went out, I believe. Back I to back delay. Because the, the, the official throwing the flag is way back to the uh, side judge over on the far 30 yard line. And he's the guy that's responsible Jeez. for watching the play clock. Of course, so too is your quarterback, Mike Beeler. And Mike just snapped. That I'm going to say a half a second too late, but nonetheless, you go backwards 10 yards on a third and three is now a third and 13. You're yeah. backed up. You don't want to make a mistake here. Yeah, all the way back to the uh, eight-yard line inside the 10. 
Bring, uh, Jimmy's bring Johansson in the backfield. He's flanked to the left of uh, Beeler out of the gun, and he has twins left. Beeler has a single wide out right. Looks over the middle, pump fake. Now he throws it. Got a man again wide open coming down the seam, and it's caught by Ewald at the 35. He's to the 40. Jimmy's convert on third and 13. They go from the 8 all the way to the 40-yard line. Well, there's one of those deals like in basketball when you say, oh, don't shoot that, and then all of a sudden you say, good shot. But Beeler, great pocket presence. He had bodies all around him that time. Just stood in there as long as he possibly could and put the ball right in the money. So great play to come back after the two mental errors. Yeah, the protection was terrific again for the Jimmy's. Five receiver formation. Jimmy's are ready. They have it first and 10, their own 40. Shotgun snap to Beeler. Look left he comes left and a quick out and it's caught right on the sidelines by the Jimmy's Lance Johansson lined up as a receiver the running back for the Jimmy's and on a quick out he picks up five make it a four yard gain so the Jimmy's are coming right back down the field and they're ready to run another play I tell you these two teams get off play so quickly my four color commentator doesn't have a chance to talk here this afternoon got five receiver formation for Beeler twins to his left trips to his right on second down at about six Jimmy's operating from their own 44 Beeler's ready for the shotgun snap, but it's a good one. And he stands in the pocket, throws it deep down the seams, and holding is coming up here, trying to get down the seams on the near side for Jamestown, and being held up was Hochin. And uh, it's going to go, I believe, as a holding on the D-back. I don't think pass interference. Let's see. It is holding on South Dakota Tech. Boy, good call. We'll get you a zebra shirt. But I saw the same thing you did, Mark. Tom Lunsman, the free safety, was trying to keep up with Kirby Hochin, and that just wasn't going to happen. But good read again. The vanilla defense has disappeared for the Rockers. They're bringing a lot of stunts and a lot of different looks now for Beeler to look at. I thought he made a great read that time, laid the ball out beautifully, and all of a sudden Kirby didn't quite get there. And, of course, the reason being, a little bit of a hold in there that slowed him down. He's a junior out of Pheasanton, and it's a holding for 10 yards. The ball is now to the Tech. 46-yard line. Jimmy said uh, twins left, twins right. Here comes Hassauer in motion, and he's coming right to left. Shotgun snap was good. It's fired out in the flat near side. Out of the backfield comes Johansson, 40 to the 35, and that's a horse collar. If they want to call it, they could. He was brought down with a horse collar tackle. Jimmy's sideline is pointing that out. No flag. The ball is at the 32 of... Uh, the Rockers, a gain of 14. Yeah, I'm going to put that one on the white hat. I think he's the guy that has to watch the tackle going out of bounds there, and that was a horse collar. There's no way to get around it. And that's 15 more if you call that. Yeah, yeah, should have been called, I think. Trips left, twins right. Jimmy's are moving down the field quickly here in the early part of second uh, uh, quarter action. 14-6 James down. Five receivers right now with the spread offense for Beeler. Shotgun snap again, good. Three-man rush, make it a four. He'll tuck and run. 30 to the 25, and on the scramble, he picks up seven on the play. And he was finally chased down, tackle made by Andrew Isom. But uh, Beeler's intent was to throw, but the pocket started to collapse early this time, so he just took off straight down the field. Well, that's your quarterback just playing football. If it opens up like that, you got to go. Nice job by Mike Beeler. And he'll bring Johansson in the backfield, stay with the gun, trips left, single wide out right, second down and three, ball at the 25 of the Rockers. Shotgun snap. Beeler wasn't looking for it, and it's on the ground, and I think he fell on it. He wasn't ready for the snap, but it hit him in the chest. And he went, whoa, what the heck, where did this come from? And then he fell on it back at the 32-yard line, so not on the same page with his center. That's a big loss all the way back to the 32, maybe the 33-yard line on a second and short. Now it's third and long. Ouch. Well, let's see if Beeler pulls another rabbit out of his hat like he did the last time. They had the two delays, and he came with a great pass down the field to Ewald. Now, instead of, as you said, it was going to be like a, a second and two snap there. You back up your third and just over ten. So we'll go with four receivers. Trips left, single wide out to the right. In the receiver formation, we see Kyle Brewer out there now, wide out left out of Colfax, North Dakota. Third and ten, good protection. Beeler looking for the end zone. He's got a man out here. It's Bo caught at the five, and can he get in? He's shoved out at the one. The Jimmy receivers are getting wide open downfield here in the first half. Well, and, and that I heard you call that play last night in the Blue Jay game, and that's your post and then corner or post go or whatever you want to call it, but you sell the post hard up the middle. Beeler did a good job of that. That locked the safety inside, got the corner to bite to the inside. Bo puts the move on, breaks back to the outside, and had a lot of room, and that was just a good throw again by Mike Beeler, who's starting to get a little of that quarterback swagger back that we saw to Cattell so often last year. You bet. First and goal at the one. Beeler is going to option down the line. He'll tuck, and he can't get in. He lost the yard on the play. He's still struggling. They're going to blow it dead at the two. And he was greeted in a hurry by Tom Lundsman, uh, the free safety, six feet, 200 pounds. 
And uh, that will go for a loss of two on the play. We're down to 9-12 left in the first half. 14-6 Jimmys and Jamestown on the verge of extending the lead. The Rockers that time in their base 3-4 defense. Now they're going to bring in a goal line type of defense. But out of the 3-4, they were not vanilla. They had everybody in the box and brought them in every gap. That's the reason the running play didn't go. For look, look for the Jimmys to maybe put it in the air possibly. Brewer wide left. They'll go inside. Fake Johansson. Here's the pitch coming around the corner outside. Touchdown is first as a Jimmy, the true freshman out of Fergus Falls, Minnesota. Matt Midhaugen playing in his first game here today because Tweed is injured. Jimmy's faked inside to Johansson, and then the uh, toss sweep coming around the right side, and he walked it in. Well, I gotta, I want to tell Matt, you know, true freshman, enjoy that one, baby, because that's the easiest touchdown you're ever going to get in this league. That was just a nice job and an assignment mistake by the Rockers, but a nice job by Beeler. He brought the outside linebacker to him, took a hit, made the pitch, and Midhagen just walked in. Ten plays, 89 yards. And here's Nygaard for the point after. Snap, good placement, good kick is up, and he drives it right on through, and the Jimmys lead 21-6 to over the undefeated Rockers. Jamestown is jacked up here for their homecoming game. Come back with a kickoff in 30 seconds on your Jimmy Football Connection. 1400 KQDJ, Jamestown. Walls Pharmacy. It's more than just a place to pick up your prescriptions. It's a local hub of history and information. First, it's where you'll find Larry, Jerry, and Laurel, three of the most dedicated and professional pharmacists in the area. They know your local doctor. They can also answer your questions on all types of medications. Walls Pharmacy is also where you'll find the most complete library of Louis L'Amour books for sale, as well as greeting cards for all occasions. Walls Pharmacy, 213 First Avenue, downtown Jamestown. Call 252-3181. Walls. Back at Greeno Field, Jimmy's right now a homecoming impressive, up 21 to 6 on Mark McKenzie, broadcast partner Bill Nold, in studio engineer producer is Nathan Schweitzer. Who are these guys? Well, I'll tell you what, the Jimmy's look awfully good on offense and kind of a quick strike type of thing. Let's watch Mr. Dale, though, not give him one back. And Nygaard will kick it again high and short. I think this is really an intentional thing. And it's grabbed by one of the up men at the 30 to the 35. And coming down the right sidelines is Davis. 40, 45, a reverses field to the 50. This may backfire. He's to the 40. He's got blockers. 30, 25, 20. One man to beat, and down he goes at the 15-yard line. Touchdown saving tackle made by Kyle Blumshine, or Blumenshine, rather, out of Riverton, Wyoming. So the Jimmys purposely are kicking it short. But uh, this time, it backfires on him. I'm going to correct you on that tackle. That was Andy Rogers out of Williston, Mark. I think you might have been on the Jimmy roster. You mentioned Blumshine, right? Right. Uh, it was actually a Jimmy, but it was uh, Rogers, number 18, from Williston. And there you go. I think what the Jimmys are doing on that kickoff, Mark, they're directional kicking, but I, I just don't see them kicking the ball far enough down. So on the kickoff return, it's an inside That's handoff right. to Dale. And Dale is spun down right at the line of scrimmage, maybe lost yard, and getting in there for Jamestown and uh, making that tackle for the Jimmys Gareth Ives. I'll, I'll correct myself. I got it backwards. I'm looking at the wrong roster. You got the right roster, <laughs> giving it to Blumshine, so look out. Let's see what the Rockers do here now. Again, I go back to big five big guys in the middle. They're going to come with double tight this time, and, and that's a pretty good throwing formation. They haven't really shown a whole lot of run other than the toss sweep, a real nice draw play earlier on. Yeah, Tech starting at the uh, Jamestown 15-yard uh, line. Russell will throw, comes underneath Dale. Dale gets a block from the official to the 10. He's inside the 10, the 5, and he's hit at the uh, goal line and driven backwards. He'll get to the 1, found the zebra, the umpire out front, who helped spring that play a little bit more. He got in the way of some Jimmy tacklers. He did. Both tight ends just kind of ran straight up the field to take the safeties out of the play. The wideouts took the corners deep. And what Dale did is just ran a little tiny circle route coming out of the backfield, caught the ball just in front of the line of scrimmage, and as you said, made his way by the umpire, picked up a screen, if you will, or a pick in basketball. That allowed him to get to the near sideline. And Russell will stay with the gun. It's the first and goal at the one. Holy cow. We just can't keep up. Up and down the field we go here. Barth is the uh, setback, and the fullback gets the call, runs into his own man, and down he goes. He maybe lost a yard. He ran into one of his big blockers, and that blew the whole play up, and Jamestown dived uh, on top of him, and leading that charge for Jamestown was Gareth Ives. They say he did lose about a yard. Yeah, the Rockers tried to pull the left guard that time and get him around the center and lead up over on the B gap over on the right side, but the Jimmy defensive line just knocked it backwards. And, yeah, I don't know if you're going to have time at halftime to catch up on all these <laughs> stats because they've just gone up and down, and nobody takes a whole lot of time between plays. Both teams go with that no-huddle offense. 
Second goal. The ball goes out to Jimmy, too. Jimmy's up. 21 to 6, but the Rockers have come storming right back down the field. A big kickoff return that covered 55 yards for Marshall Davis to put his team back in business. Rolling to his right, now firing underneath, missing his man, Russell, and he was hit as he threw. He had to hurry the throw, and he had a man back in the end zone, but he threw it out of the uh, outstretched uh, fingertips of Jason Bielstein, and then he got whacked on. A couple of Jimmys met at the quarterback. Yeah, that Bielstein was all alone. If Russell would have had just an ounce more time, he had to throw it a little quicker than he wanted to. Pressure that time came from Wibstead at the nose guard, and also the other guy in there was number 51, uh, 51 Blake Williamson. So it is third and goal. So from first and goal at the one, it's third and goal at the two. And from the gun is Russell. Got a slot receiver right, wide out to his left. Jimmy's there blitzing. Russell scrambling, rolling to his right, looking end zone, comes over the middle and missed his man. Ostheimer was there. The pass a little bit behind him. It was probably catchable, but he kind of lost his footing, was falling, and reached back with the right hand on the right shoulder. And it goes off his fingertips incomplete, so it looks like the Jimmys will force another field goal attempt. Well, that was Drew Bear with the pressure that time from the left side, kind of in the face of the quarterback, Russell. And when Russell looks at video, he's going to wish he had both of those throws back, Mark, because he had open receivers beyond the goal line both times and just missed them. This will be a 19-yard uh, attempt. Basically an extra point, Bill, is what we're looking at here. Yeah. And uh, Smith has nailed a couple, a 21 and a 21, and this one is for 19. Rockers got to be upset there. Struggling in the red zone. Extra point. They fake it on a field goal attempt and walking in. Oh, boy, the Jimmys got burned. Trevor Roberts, the holder. They faked what was a field goal that amounted to an extra point, and the Jimmys bid on it. Coming up out of the hold was the, uh, uh, the holder, Trevor Roberts, and he rolled to his right and just walks in untouched for the touchdown. Yeah, I love the call. I, you know, don't care for the result for the Jimmys, but I'll tell you what, he just kind of sat the ball down on the hold and, and then rolled out of there and just trotted around the end zone. There was nobody there. The corner, the outside backer, they all collapsed down on the snap. But we'll stay with the same 11 players, and now it's an extra point attempt for Smith. What a shootout we have going. The extra point is off the upright, and then it skips back inside. He just shaved that one in. A wobbly, slow snap that came back to the holder. I thought that one may be blocked. But he got it off, and it hits the left upright and skims in for the extra point. So Smith with the point after, and it's 21 to a 13. Jimmy's with the lead. Hang on. Jamestown's got a kickoff all the way. Kickoff here by Marshall Davis. Returned 55 yards to the uh, Jamestown 15. And they faked the field goal, got a touchdown out of that. But we've had a little of everything here today. We have, and, and you know, that that was a huge call. You, you know, you, you were talking about the frustration, you know, having to settle for three field goals in the red zone. That makes it even a bigger call by the South Dakota Mines staff, you know, because they're tired of the frustration, too. And, and the Jimmies kind of really got caught with their shorts down around their ankles because that's almost something, if you thought about it, you know, the one thing is it's an extra point. Hey, if they kick it, they get three, let's get off the field. But don't let them fake the ball. Boy, I wasn't looking for it. They got me, too. I wasn't either. If we'd had a little more time maybe to think about it, but I'll tell you what, they came out and executed it very well. They fooled everybody because all 11 orange helmets were squeezing the middle. So it is uh, on the uh, fake field goal. The holder, Trevor Roberts, who gets the a touchdown run that will cover in three yards. He just came out of his, uh, his hold, his crouch, and... Ran around the right side. Nobody's there. Ewalt will get another chance from the 5. He's to the 10, 15. Here he comes again, 20, 30. Caught at the 32 and dragged down there. And the tackle made by the Hard Rockers, uh, Trent Jungworth. He's a sophomore out of Redfield, South Dakota. So Ewalt won't take this one back 94 yards, but he gets a return of about 25. Well, 6.35 to go till half, 21-13 Jimmys. I guess that's a lot of time the way this game has gone. But if you're the Jamestown College Jimmy offense right now, Mark, what you'd like to do is really put together one of those four, five, or six, six and a half minutes. Let's make it drives and go to Pater, get some points on, not give it back to the hard rocker offense. And Beeler will work with trips to his right, single wide out left from the gun. Jimmy's operating from their own 32, headed to the north on top, 21-13. Little shuffle pass inside Johansson. This one for a touchdown against Stout. 35, twist out of a tackle at the 40, goes to the 42, close to a first down. Depends on the spot. Johansson again shows he's uh, pretty elusive. And, boy, he can, really, he can really shuffle and dance those feet, and they give him a first down. Yeah, and, and the Rockers' vanilla defense is no more. They're still lining up in that 3-4, bringing pressure. That time they brought it from the outside, and I'm not sure. I think it was Lucini, the linebacker, that really got a hit on Beeler, and that's going to cause Bud Edsel to say, you know what, 
Time out. Let's go check on our quarterback. Let's take a break here because Beeler's really hurting out on the field. I think he took a hit kind of in the ribs or maybe even on the hand in front of the ribs right after he made that forward pitch. Yeah, he's kind of bent over, stooped over. You're right. to give him a drink of water. Time out. Bud Edsel, see if his quarterback can catch his breath. I think it knocked the wind out of him. It looks like he's okay. He's standing there drinking some water. A little wobbly. and They may bring him off. Take a look at him. Yeah, and Coach Etzel, I think, you got you know, in a situation like this, you, you know, you kind of want to maybe question a little bit, you know, that ball is away, and there was a heck of a hit after it was away, and it's not like you run an option backwards with a, you know, where they, and you're pitching the ball backwards, the quarterback is still a threat to run. Basically, when it's pitched forward like that, it is a forward pass, and, and therefore the ball's gone, and he's no longer a threat. So you kind of question that, was that a necessary hit or not? But Beeler's going to stay out there. He's in the huddle with the rest of the guys, so let's see if he doesn't stay on the field. A little shuffle pass that went for 10, and and he got waxed, but uh, yeah, it looks like he's got his breath back, and he's ready. First down, Jimmy's from their own 42, 21-13, Jamestown. We've had two big kickoff returns, one for each team. We've had a fake field goal for a touchdown. Beeler's found wide-open receivers much of the half so far. He'll go with four receivers on this set. Trips to his right. In the backfield, he's got Johansson. Again, injured Jay, Jay Tweed. Oh, now the center moved the ball, and that's five yards for a false start. And that one was so evident, I could see it from here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one of those, uh, what do they call them, blooper tapes, because uh, really what happened, Brent Lemaire, who plays that center spot, uh, just he, he moved the ball about six, eight inches backwards, and then he slid it back like nobody <laughs> saw it. <laughs> Whistles and flags went everywhere. So uh, this will make it first and 15. The Jimmy's back to their own 37, 627 before halftime. Our producer today, uh, in-studio engineer is Nathan Schweitzer and Black Hill State's at Valley, Dakota State at Minot, Mainville at Dickinson. Illinois and NDSU are playing the Bison's homecoming game. That started at 1 at Fargo Dome. We'll check all those games. Twins with a big one coming up in about an hour. Screen near side, flanker screen to Wilson. 40, 45, good blocks out front. He shoved out around the 48-yard line. And for Jamestown out front, receivers throwing blocks, including Ewalt. Also in the mix, Hossauer did a nice job. That will go for a gain of 10, maybe 10 plus. Yeah, really, first down throw is what it should be without that penalty. So it'll be second, and I would say four. Second down, now four receivers to the left and a single wide out right. Look at this formation. I don't think we've seen this one this year from the Jimmies. Four receivers left side, and they'll set up the bubble screen. Low throw caught by Johansson, 45-50 with a burst of speed. He's caught at the 48, kind of ducked his head and dove for the first down marker. Bit short. Pass play goes for four, so it's second down, third down rather, in inches. And a timeout for the Jimmy offense. Second timeout for Jamestown, 5.47 to go in the half. It's 21-13. Jimmy's Jimmy offense has been moving the ball all over the place in the first half. And the good news is they're scoring. Much of the season, we've been talking, Bill, about the Jimmy offense moving the ball with success between the 20s. But this year, uh, yeah. this game, the Jimmys are finishing the drives. Yeah, you bet, and just a little more confidence there. And guys, you know, making the throws. Uh, Beeler throwing the ball well. Guys making the catches, that type of thing. Now, the Jimmys brought in, I think it was um, uh, Austin Scholl, a fullback, and they also brought in Joel McLaughlin, a tight end. Looked like they were going to go to a big offense, and now Coach Etzel's going to talk with the officials over here as there's a break, and uh, they're still, I'm not sure they're sure. That, yeah, here they go. They're going to go with that personnel group, so they're going to bring in a couple of new guys into the offense as they rotate them in here for the short yard play. So we're kind of selling run here, aren't we? Are advertising a running play? Well, I think so, and yet I guess I don't know. McLaughlin, 6'6", 250, is a redshirt freshman out of Ironton, Minnesota, so that gives you a kind of an extra tackle over there. At the, he's going to line up at the left tight end spot. Go with a broken eye. Ewalt and Hostauer wide to the right. Jimmy's burned their second time out. Third down and about a yard. The ball is at the attack 48 and a half yard line. Yeah, and, and they, excuse me, Mark, they're lining Scholl up behind McLaughlin over on that left side in a broken eye. So, yeah, you would look at this and you'd say on paper they're going to run right at that left tackle spot, try to power the ball ahead, but you never know. Okay, we'll see if uh, the play, the way it appears. That it is set will develop that way. 5.46 to go in the half. 21-13, Jimmy's. Beeler, for a rare time, gets under center. Now they'll motion to the right. Let's see if they run it to the right side with Show coming to the right side. Johansson, the lone setback. They'll run right up the middle. He's got the first down and more. Dives across the 45 of South Dakota Tech to the 44. Straight ahead football goes for about five yards and a first down for the Jimmy. Yeah, good call, Mark Martin. Really got all our attention on that tight end and that fullback. He flipped him from left to right. Both guys at the same time, kind of a flip, they call that, where you move your power over to the other side. So now you, you get the defense thinking they're going right to the, toward the defense. Now you think they're going left, and heck, they went right between the guards. Yep, fresh set of downs. Ball at the 45 of Tech. James down ahead. 21 to a 13, 5, 16 to go. 
in the first half. Beeler goes back to the gun. Twins right, single wide out left. Johansson in the backfield with him. Shotgun formation. Tech shows a blitz. And they bring four. Flanker screen to Wilson near side. And he's got it at the 45. Dives to the 41. Minimal gain. Got about three. And down the line pursuit that time for South Dakota Tech was very good. And in the mix, Tom Lundsman again. Jimmy's there set to run another play after a gain of two. Sixth play of the stride. Started at the Jimmy 31. Presently at the Tech 42-yard line. Trips left. Tight end in motion will shift to the left side of the offensive line. That's Joe McLaughlin. Now the Jimmys will bring Wilson in motion. He'll settle right side of the field. Wide out near side, near sideline. Beeler still barking signals, second and eight from the Tech 41 from a shotgun formation. Joe Hansen in the backfield, woman who takes the inside handoff. Trying to get outside, breaks the tackle. Can he turn the corner? No. Down the line pursuit was awesome for South Dakota Tech. Finished off by Timothy Lukimi. Uh, Lukimi with the uh, tackle, and uh, there's no gain on the play. I think we've been saying Lucini, but talking with Tom Rudabush, the uh, play-by-play guy for South Dakota Tech, he says it's Lukimi. And I've been saying Lucini, so what the heck? We'll just say he's a good football player because we're having to call his name. That was a play, though, where Lance, really, you got to pop that inside. Casey Hossauer ha- had a block to the outside. He tried to go around it. And you just go inside of that block first, you're going to pick up more yards. Lucchini. Lucchini. Like Zucchini. Okay, with Lucchini. Got a third down and eight. Shotgun snap the dealer. Got all day. Looking. Fires deep wide open. And the catch is made at the five-yard line. The bad news is... Wilson had to leave his feet to make the diving catch, and he's dropped, or he's down where he landed at the five. Nobody within ten yards of the guy. Yeah, and you know, there really is no bad news because that was an unbelievable catch by Matt Wilson. He had to jump backwards, went up high to get it, pulled it down, hit the ground hard, and hung on. As a quarterback, you say, wow, how can you throw like that when he's wide open? But as you release the ball, he wasn't that wide open. It was a broken coverage. All of a sudden, there was no white shirt around. Too bad he had to leave his feet because that's a right. walk in touchdown. But he makes the leaping catch, lands at the five, first and goal for the Jimmies. 3.31 before halftime. A trips left, single wide out right, Beeler from the shotgun. He'll fire it over the middle, and it's bobbled and dropped. Ewald had a touchdown, and it popped right off uh, the midsection, right off his big number six on his chest, and goes incomplete. What a great throw by Beeler. That was a bullet right yeah, on the money. You're right. He threaded the needle, and Brill got a hand in there, and I think just kind of deflected it up so that Ewald couldn't get a clean catch on it. Jimmy's are ready for their second down play, second and goal at the five. Beeler out of the gun, trips left. Wilson and Bowe, and also on the far side, I believe it's Hossauer. Near side, the Jimmys have uh, Johansson and Ewald with five receivers on second and goal at the five. Shotgun snap, pass, batted down at the line of scrimmage. And then Beeler bats it out of the air before South Dakota Tech could intercept the thing. It fluttered in the air momentarily, and Big 94 was ready to grab that thing and head the other way. Andrew Munson, and a flag comes in as well after the play. Yeah, I think that was with the receivers out here on the uh, face mask. Right side, Mark. I wasn't sure if it was going to be a hold or what it was going to be, but I think one of the D-backs must have reached up and grabbed a face mask on the uh, slot to the, the, uh, to the right side, so that's a big penalty. Is it an automatic first down, Bill? Face mask is automatic, is it? Well, they got two fingers up, so they're going to replay the down. So it's half the distance, so the ball is at about the two and a half of South Dakota Tech. Jimmy's up 21 13. 319 to go before halftime. Yeah, I think that's just that five yard version face mask, is what they must have called. Twins left. Out of the gun is Beeler in the backfield. He has the true freshman who's got a touchdown in the football game. Today for uh, Jamestown, it's Matt Mithaugen. And Jamestown. Is ready to run the play on. They do say first down now, huh? Yeah, yep. it is an automatic first down. Inside, the give is to Johansson, and he struggles to get to the line of scrimmage. Eddie Gian pounced on that mark. Check that. Uh, it's uh, Joseph Burl who pounces on that one and makes the tackle for no gain. Well, not that you want to. You don't want to go forward. You don't want to get the ball in the end zone. But if anything, this does eat a little bit of clock. The Rockers have three timeouts left. But I know Coach Etzel would just as soon snap it one more time and score here. So as no mistake, jumps up and takes points off the board, like seemed to happen the last four weeks to the Jimmies. The eleventh play of the drive. It started at the Jimmy 31. Second and goal at the Tech four. Twins to the left. Twins to the right. Right in the backfield uh, with the gun. Quarterback is Beeler to his right in the backfield. Shotgun formation. Johansson, who's going to loop out. Now, Beeler's going to tuck and run. Can he dive it across? It depends if the referees say he got the goal line before his knee went down. They're going to spot him down at the half-yard line. See, so out uh, with the uh, football, he stretched that thing out. Now he's up gimpy. Yeah, Beeler took a shot on that one, kind of got stretched out as he dove, and I think it's one of the deals where your body goes and your Ooh. leg stays behind. He's going to sit down. 
referee's going to take an official's time out here, and Mike's going to get some help. Yeah, he just collapsed. He ran back to the tent and fell down, and he can't really put much pressure on the ankle, the foot. But Edsel burns the Jimmy's final timeout. It's third and goal at the half-yard line. Ooh, Beeler is in some pain. Now he just sits down, and he's grabbing that right ankle. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the other thing that doesn't look good, he's grabbing it up high, and there's nothing worse in football, I don't think, than a high ankle sprain. It's the kind of deal that's a tough one to deal with. You can't go out and really wrap it up quick and say play through it. It's one of those deals where, um, in, you know, it could be a, a game, uh, mm. game-ending game type of injury. Yeah, the backup is Brad Lynch, who's got a touchdown pass this year against Peru State. 6'1", 200-pound sophomore out of Roseburg, Oregon. Looks like he's going to come out and take over the offense on a good situation. Huh? You come out to run a play on third and goal at the half-yard line. Well, you know, I, the old coach and me is coming out because it's a good situation. But on the other hand, there's so many things just the old deal. Don't screw it up here. Get the snap. Get it to our running back, whatever you're going to do with the football. Jimmy's, and you don't see this a whole lot, but down in close, in, in inside the 10, have been going with a shotgun type of snap. So now do you go up and get under center and try to run power? Or do you stay shotgun and try to come out with possibly a, a, just an off-tackle play, that stretch play they've done so well with, or come with a quarterback counter with a new quarterback in there? Well, they're going to leave him out there. We did, talked about the... Linton. Here's Bueller running back into the huddle. He's a tough guy. He's from Foley, Minnesota. Same place Jake Hellman's out of, but I thought he was done at least till the third quarter when he came over to the sideline because he was really favoring that ankle. Well, the way he collapsed here at the 10 and went down and grabbed his ankle, so it's third down and goal at the half-yard line. And under center goes Bueller in the backfield. He's got Johansson. And two receivers to his left. Gives straight ahead. Johansson puts his head down, and he did not get in. He got stopped right at the goal line, no gain, so fourth down and goal from the half-yard line. That's going to try to... Th Did you we still do have the one timeout left. They're showing one timeout left up on the scoreboard, so apparently weren't charged with the timeout during mm. that last break. And it really? looks like Bud says, you know what, I'm a football and a half away. I might look at this or run it down, take a timeout, and then set up a play. I thought they were out of the timeouts, Mark, after Beeler was hurt yeah. last time, but I think the officials are taking credit for that, which I don't understand because Mike Beeler stayed in the game. Right. Okay, so the Jimmys will run the clock all the way down here and take a timeout, play clock at one, timeout, Bud Ensel. Yeah, I'm a little lost with you on this one. I thought the Jimmys just burned the timeout to see if Beeler could shake off the injury, which he did, stayed in the game. But, like you said, it looks like the officials must have granted that timeout due to the injury, so now Bud Ensel takes timeout, and his team will discuss going for it on fourth down and goal at about the half-yard line. How do you kick a three here and try to build on the 21-13 lead? 132 left in the half. Well, I tell you what, I, I think this is one of those deals, and I not to not to play uh, you know second guesser here, but I think it's one of those deals where you know what you line up and you go after it. You tell your guys up front that we got to get this yard. You talk about this through the preseason, the season, the weight room, and everything else. And sometimes it comes down to this. And uh, you know, if you're, it's not necessarily a riverboat gambler. And you see who Coach Etzel's out talking to his five hogs up front. He's yep. not talking to those skill guys. I think he's laying out a challenge for them right now that we're going to line up and go for this. You guys are going to get it for us. The mere connection and Hunt and McGovern, Steiner. So we need a half-yard, guys. Let's just get a little surge here and get a touchdown. And these guys have been good this year, Mark, but I think, you know, where they've really been good or where they've had to be good because the Jimmy seemed to be behind a lot early in the games is in their pass protection. They've done a pretty good job even though they've been sacked. But when you're constantly behind and trying to throw the football, of course, the defense pins the ears back. That makes it tougher to have those great stats. Well, the Jimmys are going to go for it, and they're going to go... Uh... With Beeler under center, out of the broken eye, twins to the right. Let's see if he just follows the center. He will put his head down, and he barrels his way into the end zone right behind Brent Lemire. And the Jimmys, I believe, have a touchdown. Oh, no signal yeah, yet. I bet they do, yeah. There it is, finally. One-yard touchdown run for Beeler, and he just lowered his head and followed Brent Lemire out of Harvey, 6'2", 275-pound uh, center, into the end zone. Well, I like the call. I, uh, you know, I, I go on record before it happened, and afterwards, it's pretty easy to jump on the bandwagon. But I like the call, because Coach Etzel went out there. He talked to five offensive linemen, and I'm sure he told them, you know what, boys? We're going to run a gimpy-ankled quarterback, and we're going to run a quarterback sneak with him, and let's see what you guys can get done. And there was a great surge, so even though the signal was late, there was no doubt with the touchdown because of the surge. Nygaard's point after is good, and Jamestown leads 28-13 to in offensive explosion. Bill Jamestown had, what, five touchdowns on the season coming into this game, and they've scored four in the first half. 
Well, and they've done a little bit better job with the football. They've had the turnover in there again, but taking care of the football, I think the execution, uh, execution's a lot better. And, you know, Coach Etzel talked about, we just got to get out and throw it and catch it. And Coach Martin talked about it yesterday. You know, we just got to throw it and catch it and just play the game and not worry about things so much or making the big play. We just got to go out and play. And I think they've done a better job of that today. Somebody better get that card up here, though, and give Beeler a ride up the hill and, and get him some attention. And if we kick it short this time, let's not kick it to that Marshall guy, okay? No, as a matter of fact, let's leave it down on the ground and kick. Uh, quit, you know, they're kind of doing that little pooch kick almost. Right. If you were punting, you call it a pooch kick. But uh, Nate Nygaard with his booming leg, I'd rather see him just line up. And if you're going to kick away or what they call directional kick and you want to kick away from somebody, go ahead, but let him hammer it. Now if you look out there, look where number four is lined up. He's in the second line right here yeah. on the 30-yard line is Jamie Dale. So maybe he's trying to cross up what the Jimmies are doing. One of the up men now. So. Yeah. Marshall Davis, one of the up men, just ran one back 55 yards and set his team up for a touchdown. Nygaard's been hitting these little pop-ups. He hits a line shot. It's over Dale's head, bounces at the 20, and goes out of bounds. The Jimmies are really weary of this guy. They're not getting the ball anywhere near, near Jamie Dale, who leads the uh, conference in kickoff return yardage at 24 per game. That's the second time now that Nygaard has kicked it out of bounds, and that will give the ball to South Dakota Tech at the 40-yard line. Yeah, and what really what Tech did is they brought uh, they brought Davis and, and uh, number four Dale up and put them in the second line and I think kicked their tight ends back deep. That's a situation where heck, let's just kick it deep and see what happens. Jimmy's got a three-man front. Let's see if they bring some linebackers up there as well. Tech Russell under uh, rather shotgun formation with 1:25 left in the half. 28-13, Jimmy's Russell has twins left, twins right, and he works with Barth in the backfield. Shotgun snap. Is on the money. He'll fire it over the middle. Wide open receiver. 45-40 to the 35. Catch and run for Ostenheimer. Ostheimer all the way to the 35 of the Jimmies before he's brought down on the secondary by Castet. Big pickup. Good protection there for the quarterback Russell as well. Yeah, and the Jimmies a little vanilla now with the three-man front and just kind of going with the straight rush and then everybody dropping the zones. You don't want to open up too much area Ooh. too soon. Yeah, 25-yard gain. And just like that, it's Tech at the Jimmy 35. And they do have three timeouts left. And twins to the right. From the shotgun is Russell. He's out of San Diego. He's rolling to his right, looking in the right flat, and he'll throw it deep. And he missed his man. Turning around late, Dale. Jamie Dale was there, going vertical, cut it down the right hash mark. And the pass went sailing past his right to shoulder pad. He reached out, tried to fingertip grab it incomplete. When that ball was first let go by Russell, Bill, I thought uh, interception was in the making. Yeah. But he threaded that needle. He did, but good pressure from Jones that time along with Daniel Brewer, number 95. So he's under some pressure as he throws. Second and 10 at the 35, shotgun snap, quick out, and it's incomplete. About the 30-yard line, a kick out, uh, quick out rather, off the uh, fingertips of Andy Rogers, incomplete. So third and ten at the Jimmy, 35-yard line. And the Jimmys came with a blitz, and that's a good play to, to run against the blitz. Just a quick out timing route, but it just wasn't quite there. Russell is ready. Single wideouts either way. Jimmys have a three-man front and a couple of linebackers. Kubler's up here as well. Here comes the rush. Russell hit as he throws in the right flat. Catch is made on a quick out around the 35. Great throw under pressure. Put it right on target to Ostheimer, who goes out of bounds right at the first down marker. See if he got it. Yeah, I think he got it. They got the ball right on top of the 25-yard line. The other stick is right in the middle of the 35, so they should give it to him. It is. First down at the 25. Fresh set of downs for the Rockers. 50 seconds left. They do have three timeouts, but they're going with the hurry-up, no huddle. Single wideouts either way. From the gun is Russell. He has Barth in the backfield with Dale out of the shotgun formation. Dale to his left, Barth to his right. Look out for our... Or rather, Barth to the left and Dale to the right. And Dale, of course, will slip out underneath and make some catches. Looking left for Barth. Nearly batted down. It got through Kubler's outstretched arms somehow. Maybe he did deflect it a little bit because it landed at the shoe tops of Barth incomplete. Yeah, I think Matt might have got a piece of that. I also noticed the clock ran that time when they blew it ready for play. And I didn't. Hard Rockers apparently not looking at the clock because the ball went out of bounds on the first down. Should have clock should have stayed stopped that time. So I think the Rockers lost about 10 seconds. Ball is at the Jimmy 25. Twins left, twins right. Russell out of the shotgun. Jimmy's bring a blitz with the linebackers. Keenan coming. Pass dropped. Right at the first down marker, get a quick out right on the money to Ostheimer, and he dropped the ball. He tried to get out of bounds before he had it. You said it. He, he turned and looked for the stick, and he wanted to do two things. One, he wanted to get the pass the first down. The other thing, he wanted to keep his feet in, but he just kind of looked away. It went right by his hand and hit him right in the helmet. I don't know why Tech is, you know, even if he catches that in his down inbounds, you have three timeouts. So why the urgency to try to catch it and hurry up and get out of bounds? That's 
These two, uh, timeouts won't carry over. Third and ten. Russell looking left, looks over the middle, pump fake. He'll tuck and now throw over the middle as he faked the scramble. And he's complete over the middle underneath. It's caught by Ostheimer right at the 15 near the first down. Let's see. Depends on the spot. Now the officials will stop the clock. Tech's going to take a timeout. And it looks like a first down. Let's see if they bring out the chain gang on third and ten. Yeah, I think it's a first again. The ball this time laying kind of splitting the 15-yard line, and the stick again is splitting the, I'm looking at the 25. It's just on the inside of the 25, but he's definitely got enough to get it, unless the lines aren't straight, and I'm not betting on that. The well, field looks terrific. Again, we had an inch and a half of rain earlier this week, and the moisture again was needed. It was getting pretty dry. Boy, those winds have been nuts the last week or so, but they've settled down the last two days. Yeah, they, they, and this field really is in good shape. These guys really do a good job with it and take great care of it. And it's a little wet, you know, a little softer maybe than you'd like it to be today, but there's not much you can do to keep, the, you know, the, the rain off at the last couple of days. Temperature's around 50 today. Uh, the wind's not a factor. A little breeze that's coming out of the north. It's overcast for the most part. And you know what? It feels like early October, and that's because it is, huh? Hey, I'm not complaining. We, we don't need a heater in here. It's comfortable. I, yep. we, you and I got nothing to complain about. Maybe somebody out there is a little cool, but it really isn't that bad a day for football. As long as it's not snowing and blowing, I'm happy. <laughs> and I think that's happening down in the Black Hills. Sure, and even when you're sitting in here, you'd be whining, wouldn't you? We'd take <laughs> you will. off your jacket. And... <laughs> First down and 10 at the 15 of uh, the Jimmies. Jimmy's lead, 28 to 13. 18 seconds left in the first half. In the red zone, the Hard Rockers trying to tighten the score later in the half. Here comes a big blitz. Russell flush, rolling right, running for his life, and he'll throw it away. And breathing down his back for Jamestown was Tyler Keenan out of Winemere, North Dakota. Nice job by Keenan on the blitz, but also Wibstead. And I just got to mention Wibby at that nose guard because uh, he's a plugger. He's 6'1", 270, a junior from Jamestown. But Wibby has been in three or four or five times even with pressure on the quarterback today along with another man or two here or there. But I think he's been the most consistent pressure guy in that defensive front today. Twins to the right, including Jamie Dale. He's the slot receiver. Russell, second down and ten at the Jimmy 15, 12 seconds before halftime. Shotgun snap on the money. Now pump fake pass over the middle. Big hit, cast it. And it's popped in the air and intercepted by Kubler. Kubler's got it at the 10, trying to thread a needle to Dale. The pass got there about the time Castet did. He buried Dale. The ball popped in the air and Kubler picked it off. What a play by Castet, Mark. He, you said it, big hit, but that was almost NFL-like and that the ball got there at the same time as Castet got there. There was a big hit. Dale had not a chance in the world, and then as bad luck would have it for the Hard Rockers, it popped up in the air, and Kubler, coming from the near side, was paying attention, hustling to the football, and he gets the pick because of the hustle. Well, the quarterback had only two interceptions on the entire season for Tech, and he's been picked off twice. Russell, two interceptions today. The Jimmys will take a knee. Beeler. From his own 10, takes the knee, and it's halftime with Jamestown on top, 28-13. Great half for the Jimmies for their homecoming game. We'll take a break, come back with halftime numbers in two minutes on your Jimmy Football Connection. 1400 KQDJ, Jamestown. Got a fancy pants TV? So you went out and spent big bucks on your TV, and now you need to get HD service to see what it's made of. Well, now that Dakota Central Telecommunications has high-definition TV and digital video recording, why don't you see what we're made of? Stop by one of our offices, visit us on the web at dactel.com, or give us a call at 952-1000 or 652-3184 to get turned on to HD and DVR today. Let's hook up. The Frontier Fort Grill is best known for their steaks. Nice, thick, juicy, certified Angus beef, fresh cut, never frozen. Get a 16-ounce sirloin steak for $10.95, an 8-ounce sirloin dinner for $8.95, and their prime rib is legendary. Served every Friday and Saturday. Monday nights are extra special with prime rib and French dip for only $6.95, and their beef, liver, and onions on special for $7.95. Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. And don't forget the gift shop. High-quality custom jewelry, Black Hills Gold, Silver, Turquoise, Rhinestone Jewelry. Frontier Fort on the road to the Buffalo, Jamestown. It's time to make sure that your student can A, B, C. Make an appointment today at Professional Eye Care Centers. Right now, get a single vision frame and lens package for only $79. There's many stylish frames to choose from, and they come with scratch and impact-resistant standard lenses and a one-year warranty. And don't forget their $30 discount off contact lens packages with fitting, follow-up care, and a year supply of lenses and solutions. No other discounts or insurance apply. Offer ends September 30th. Make an eye exam part of your back-to-school to-do list. Call Professional Eye Care Centers in Jamestown, Valley City, and Karen. 
You choose the furniture, the carpet, and the accessories, and we'll help you with the year-round comfort with an electric heat pump. You're designing the perfect bathroom. We'll help heat the water for less. The dream kitchen you're planning will be even better with Energy Star Appliances. So if you're planning to build or remodel, learn about the saving by design at 